I got in touch with Eddie last year. Um, I saw him on the cover of Time Out magazine uh, as one of the people changing the way we eat and drink in Asia. Uh, he's being reported, you know, the LA Times are covering him, the New York Times. Uh, to be honest, he was exploding. And with what I do, I look for great characters that are experts in their field and um, got in touch with Eddie and yeah, he's great. <laughs> For me, this whole this whole concept, this whole show is about demystifying wine, um, finding interesting wines and also interesting stories about food and, and culture. I mean, I am half Chinese, half Australian, so I am a bit of a mix mash of both. So it, it was kind of bringing the best of the West and best of the East together and sort of find that real middle, middle ground. Um, wine is probably the key to unlocking all of this, and I guess. Beyond all that was giving people some empowerment into how to use wine in their own cultures. Um, and obviously I'm a winemaker so it's important for me to continue to, to educate and teach people how to enjoy it, um, talk about it yep. um, and you know, go out there with a bit of confidence. And, and for me, like you know, we're always looking for great characters, and so Eddie fits that bill. Um, but you know, and he's got the expertise, you know, as a winemaker. And so the exciting thing for us is like, where's the story? You know, people say, oh, wine shows are hard, and you know, you don't want to see people sniffing. But we're hunting down other characters, you know, across Asia who are making great food, and people who are making great wines that you don't know about. Uh, and through Eddie's journey, you know, we're going to be able to follow him, uh, and, and not only learn but have a great time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, characters can come from anywhere and that's why as producers we search the world high and low and, you know, obviously in the States and in the UK, you know, they do it relentlessly. Um, but I think Eddie's got such a great look and he's already got such a, a wonderful following in Asia that, that hopefully, you know, more great characters will come from the region. Absolutely, it's gone absolutely gangbusters. Yeah. Um, to the point where, I, I use Hong Kong as an example, um, They've dropped all the taxes in wine, so people are importing wines like you wouldn't believe. Just in Hong Kong alone, it's about three and a half thousand importers of wine for a small city. Uh, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of producers from all over the world. So not only producers from uh, the traditional French parts, um, but you're looking at producers from Lebanon, looking at producers from Eastern Europe, you're looking at producers from even what we talk about in the show is Asia. Um, and that's the exciting part. So it's not no longer just about the, the traditional platforms. So people are exploring. Asians are really thirsty for wine, yep. but they're also thirsty for what we call wine adventure because you can basically travel to so many different countries in, in a bottle. Yeah. So and it's fair to say also that uh, Hong Kong is the hub of you know of Asian wine. You know, uh, wherever they come from around the world into Hong Kong uh, and through the show. We're going to be able to discover wines across Asia, and actually Eddie can actually bring them back to his store, where people from wherever they're from on Earth uh, can access them through Eddie. We're turning it on its head. <laughs> we really are. Like we're, it's a it's a revolution. You say, you know? Yeah, yeah it's absolutely a revolution. Yeah. And, and turning it on its head, but actually by leading by example, I guess, yeah. and going through it, and you know, showing people that it's okay to do it to begin with. Um, and you know you have cultures like from India where it's really exotic spicy food and temperatures are you know scorching hot 35 plus degrees every day of the week <laughs> and people are going what do you drink with this and so it, it's a lot of trial and error uh, but it's also just being empowered to, to find what, what I think is, is that feng shui balance you know it's the lovely marrying and harmony of food and wine and complementing each other rather than sort of one over the top of each other. Yeah, people do have a poor perception of you know Asian wines and we're not saying that every Asian wine is great but you know there's no reason why a wine that you'll find in a supermarket and Eddie I hope you back me up on this <laughs> uh, you know can sometimes be a fantastic you know find and it might be half the price of what you normally pay um, but there's no reason why it wouldn't be a great wine. Absolutely. I, I actually write this um, article for Time Out uh, every year. It's called Supermarket Heroes and it was I actually wrote it based on the fact that I just watched the Avengers movie and I thought right I need to find the Avengers in the supermarket. So I've got the supermarket Blanc Heroes and the supermarket Rouge Heroes. So I find the best wines under 200 Hong Kong and you know range from 80 Hong Kong up to you know like I said 200 and there's some incredible wines out there and people just need to go and explore a little bit but you know I've done the homework for them so they can just basically read about yeah. it. So critical to the show is obviously we want it to be, it has to be relatable to viewers no matter where they live. Uh, so, you know, we're taking Eddie on this adventure to places where there are renowned flavors, 
renowned foods, but also these foods can be found pretty much anywhere you know in the world. So, yeah. you know, for us, I suppose we're yeah. helping anyone. Well, no one really eats or drinks, you know, locally that much anymore. You know, people are uh, exposed to food from all over the world. I mean, you think about how many Chinatowns there are in, in every yeah. country. It's unbelievable. There's even little Indias, there's Chinatowns. Yeah. So people go to these places on a regular basis as part of their, you know, eating week, if you want to call it that, and they want to take a bottle of wine. So it's, whether it's BYO or you want to order something off the list, um, it, it's completely relatable. So it doesn't have to be a show that's in Asia, shot for Asians, etc., etc. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of, it could be shot in Asia, but people still travel to Asia. People go to Chinatown, people go to Little India. Um, so it's totally relatable on an international sense. Absolutely, like, you know, education is a big part of it and also takeaway. So, um, you know, where we wanted to go to is eventually you can be sitting in your favorite Indian restaurant ordering your chicken tikka masala and you can look at your app and go, what would Eddie recommend I drink? And, you know, hopefully one day those wines will also be on the menu uh, in the UK, in the US, in Australia. Uh, so, you know, there's lots of ways that we want to go. Yeah, I mean, it's about simplifying it right, yeah. as well. And people want sort of information very quickly. So wine is obviously translated from so many different languages and wine itself is a language. <laughs> so you know, trying to, to give people the opportunity just to access the information and also make a decision is just so much, so much power in that in itself.